This is a video lesson on linear and angular velocity. When we're working with angular velocity, we're typically <coughs> considering an object that is rotating, circular object. So in our picture here, we have a circle of radius r. The angle theta is indicated. And s stands for the arc length that's corresponding to that angle theta on this circular, on this circle. V stands for linear velocity, and omega, which looks like a W, is the angular velocity, T being time. The formula that connects the arc length to the angle theta is given by S equals R theta. And this comes from the circle circumference formula, C equals 2 pi R. And we're just looking at a proportion of the circle. Uh, note that the theta must be in radians. That's a common error when working with these problems is to use degrees or revolutions or some other measure. Uh, it's important that we keep that in radians. The linear velocity is v, which will be s over t. Uh, s is our arc length, as before, and t is time. So the units you'll see for V would be something like feet per second, centimeters per hour, miles per hour, and, and so on. The angular velocity, omega, is defined to be theta over T. And some examples of units for omega would be radians per minute, but you might also see revolutions per minute as a common one, or rotations per day, and so forth. The connection between velocity and linear velocity and the angular velocity, so v and w, or v and omega, is v equals, well, it's s over t to start with. And if we replace s with r times theta, then we see that v is r times theta over t, or r times omega. That's a useful formula there, v equals r omega. So to summarize, our formulas are s equals r theta, v equals s over t, omega is theta over t, and another formula is v equals r omega. And a reminder that if you're going to use s equals r theta or v equals r omega, both of these equations require radian measure for your angle. Let's look at an example now. Suppose we have a wheel on a bus, and the wheels on the bus are going round and round at 500 revolutions per minute. Sometimes we'll write that RPM. And the, the diameter of the wheel on the bus is 40 inches. So its radius would be 20 inches. And we're going to be asked to find the speed of the bus in miles per hour. So when we work with problems like these, I would recommend just sticking with these formulas. Uh, you know, you could work with circumference, and there's nothing terribly wrong with that. It's just that I, I found in checking people's work that if you stick with these formulas, you tend to make less mistakes. And honestly, I think they're simpler, simpler to use. So what we would do is look at the information given, identify and the, and the information we're trying to find, and identify the variables that, that we're working with. So in this problem, we're given in an omega. Specifically, it's 500 revolutions per minute. The 
and we're also given the radius, which is 20 inches. and we want to find the linear speed or velocity v specifically in miles per hour the equation we'll use would be v equals r omega since that's the three variables we're working with so we would use v equals r omega but as pointed out earlier we can't simply multiply 20 times 500 because the formula V equals R omega requires omega to be in rads per time. And over here, theta is in rads. Okay, so down here with V equals R omega, it's fine to use that equation as long as our omega is in rads per unit time. So here, let's convert that. Omega is 500, and let's write RPMs as revolutions per minute. And it's really easy to convert that into rads per minute because we know that there's 2 pi rads for every one revolution. So the revolutions cancel and we're left with 1,000 pi rads per minute. So if you're starting with the RPM, all you have to do is multiply by 2 pi to convert your omega into rads per minute. And now we're free to use our V, would be 20 inches, there's our R, times 1,000 pi rads per minute, which is our omega. And the result would turn out to be, have units inches per minute. The radian unit is dimensionless in that we can include it or not include it depending on what we want for convenience. So it makes sense to use rads um, per minute here in our omega and inches here but when we write out what our V is we'll ignore the radians and just write it as inches per minute so we end up with 20,000 pi inches per minute so the problem is done with the exception of converting that inches per minute into miles per hour which we will do next so using the conversion factors, one foot is 12 inches, one mile is 5,280 feet, and 60 minutes is one hour, multiplying those through. And I use the pi symbol on my calculator to get the most accurate result. And after rounding, our final answer is approximately 59.5 miles per hour. In our second example, we'll consider a similar situation, but we'll work with the velocities in the reverse direction. So let's let's say we have a bicycle that has <laughs> has wheels, round wheels, with diameter one meter. So the radius would be 0 0.5 meters. And let's suppose the bicycle is moving with a linear velocity of 18 kilometers per hour. OK, so that's a, the wheel on the bike has a radius 0.5 meters. It's moving at a velocity of 18 kilometers per hour. And let's say we want to find the angular velocity of the wheel in radians per hour. Okay. 
So once again, we'll have the fact that we're given some information here. It's V is 18 kilometers per hour, and the radius is 0 0.5 meters. And we want to find omega. So as before, we're using the same three variables. So we'll go ahead and use V equals R omega. But since we're solving for omega, let's go ahead and do that division by R and write omega is V divided by R. Now, this is all good, except we want to make sure our unit of distance is equal in both of these. So when we're writing out our velocity, we either need to write that in terms of meters per hour or change our radius to kilometers. It doesn't matter which way you go, you'll get the same answer. Um, since there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer, it's simple enough to convert this velocity to meters per hour. Our velocity is 18 times 1,000, so 18,000 meters per hour. So our omega would be 18,000 meters per hour divided by 0 0.5 meters. And that works out to multiplying by 2, so 36,000. The meters cancel, and we're left with hours in the denominator. And in the numerator, we'll conveniently put in our rats. And that's it. So identify what rate you're given, whether it's a angular velocity, which you can determine by looking for units like degrees per minute or re revolutions per hour. Something that has to do with rotation, obviously, would be an angular velocity. Convert that, not necessarily immediately, but eventually you'll want to convert that into radians per time. And then your linear velocities you'll recognize by being units of distance over time. And radius, of course, would also be a distance. So making sure your units match up, being careful with your radian measure. Um, these, these formulas really aren't that tricky to use. Just watch out for those pitfalls. Hope this helped. Thanks for listening.